Too many of my people do not know what they are up against. The evil they are facing, they want to watch it from the fence. I said, I will protect you. And I mean what I say. And I understand your reticence to jump both feet in the fray. Your wolves in sheep's clothing have laid you astray. They either do not know or do not want to say how severe is my judgment day. They have lulled you into a false sense of security. Just to call yourself a Christian is good enough for me? To go to church once a week and you have it covered? To play your worship music where you perform your worldly tasks? And if you want a blessing, well, you just have to ask. And when you acquire what your heart desires, a good job, a new home, or car, you believe I have blessed you? I do not want you to be poor, and if you do not receive it or achieve your set goals, you think this is persecution, as the Bible foretold. I want you to consider my servant Moses. I am sure you are familiar with the things he did. After standing up to Pharaoh, a most powerful man told him things he did not want to hear over and over again. He went to Mount Sinai and had to speak with me. For forty days and forty nights, he did not eat or drink. When he went back down, saw what the people had done, he came back up the mountain to talk me out of killing them. This time, he laid flat on his face another forty nights and days, pleading for my people, who had so quickly gone astray. This is just a fraction of what this man accomplished when he worked for me. He was the greatest man alive due to his humility. I was working with him, or he could not do what he did. But he did it. I let my people live. He made one mistake. He lost his temper at Meribah when I brought water from the stone. He indicated it was him. When they all arrived at my promised land, I did not allow him to go in. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, do you say that was Moses, who is not me? And I ask you, did Moses have it easy? All he had to think about was worldly blessings for me. Moses came to heaven, and here is his reward. He did not expect it while on earth, for he knew how badly humans erred, that they did not deserve a chance to stay alive, but he pleaded for them anyway. And many did survive, but a huge multitude died in rebellion against me. I want you all to see you do not run the show. I want you all to know you owe me. When I ask you to work for me, to further my cause, one that benefits you in the end, you simply pause and show me you are busy working on your own goals and only want me to help you. Well, that is not how my story goes. When you read my word, I want you to note what my servants did in the books they wrote according to my will. To let you all know, it is no picnic to work for me, no exciting concert, sitting in a grand church in clean and spacious pews and listen to a sermon your minister did choose. My true servants got down and dirty, spent a lot of time prostrate, begging for forgiveness for my people who are ingrates. So please consider this. Would you fast for 80 days and nights to save an errant nation? Are you so great at being humble, you forsake all temptation this world has to offer and strictly work for me? With your goal to gain a place in my kingdom for eternity? Or do you believe it will just happen for you believe in me? That is all it takes. You do not have to work for me. And do you think I do not talk to you? You only pray to me, a one-way street?
then how did all those Bible writers know what to write down in the words following the phrase, Thus says the Lord, your concerned Father in heaven.